What's up, everybody? It is good to get back into the studio today. Today, we are taking a look at Pro Tools 2021.12, the December version of the release, and whether or not it works well on the Apple M1 Mac Mini. Now, this is the Mac Mini that came out just about a year or a little over a year ago. Uh, now, there's some new laptops and things that have come out, but this is the Mac Mini desktop version of that. And um, we're just going to do a little bit of testing, do a little bit of making sure that things work well. Um, so here we go. I'm going to make this vocal track active. So here's my vocal coming into line four on my interface. Uh, perfect level. And I'm going through my normal plugin chain, um, obviously. Um, I'm also running that plugin chain on my audio capture software at the same time. So um, this is all just happening. And uh, I'm just going to come down here towards the end of my session, you know, after any music is, is done playing, really. And uh, I'll just select both of these tracks. Go ahead and... Oh, that's nice. And I'm going to go ahead and um, just get ready to record. Hello. Merry Christmas. Oh, yeah. And you can see I've got a couple of things going on. I mean, I've got an Echo Boy uh, running here for a tape slap. I've got that running into a sort of lexicon style plate reverb. And it's just, yeah, it's running like a dream. I can't, I can't complain right now. So I'll go ahead and stop that. I mean, for my needs, this is exactly what I would normally do, right? This is precisely what I would want to use it from a recording perspective. This is exactly what I'd want to do. Um, and, you know, if I'm recording multiple, you know, maybe I'm printing some stuff out of contact and, you know, normally that that's kind of the sort of probably the maximum number of tracks that I would need to record at any given time. And this is one, two, you know, four, eight, 12, you know, it's about four, 12 to 15, you know, stereo audio tracks here. And uh, that's, that's about the max that I would want to record at any given time. And then just mixing or listening. Uh, this is what else I would do, right? I would just come back and, and listen to this or monitor this and do some mixing. And so I've got plugins all over this uh, particular session right now. Let's just give it a listen. So it's uh, a cover of Soundgarden's uh, Blow Up the Outside World. And I've got, you know, all sorts of plugins, not only running on individual instruments or channels, like the SSL EV2, uh, the new one, is all over this thing, uh, just doing doing some mixing. And um, also on the groups, I've also got an API 2500 here. Uh, and then for parallel compression, I've got... Uh, a Bluey 76, uh, FabFilter Pro C, uh, Pro C2, and another going into another SSL, right, for the group. And then there's just the click track, and then the bass guitar group, <clears throat> a compression stage, a preamp stage, where I'm really just using this. This is a really cool setting um, where just experiment with this kind of stuff yourself, but experiment with turning this drive on and then tucking back the output to really use this as a drive circuit or as a preamp circuit, you know? Uh, you can get the same sort of volume output as you had whenever you turn the plug-in on initially, but get some really nice saturation and coloration using the uh, Neve sort of 1073 or Shep 73 style uh, preamp. So anyway, um, the SSL uh, on that channel as well. Again, EV2. And this is just a DI, right? Blank, totally blank bass guitar track. And then a have got Guitar Rig 6 just openly running on here the entire time. So I haven't printed this down or anything yet. This is a great sound too, by the way. I'll probably eventually print this. But I just haven't gotten around to it yet because it hasn't given me any problems. I haven't needed to print it. I haven't, you know, I've just kind of left it as I recorded it or the day, you know, on the day that I recorded it and, um, it's still sounding great. And then, yeah, here's my acoustic guitar tracks. Everything's sounding fantastic. Nothing. 
just going into an SSL EV2 again on the group, and then the vocals down here. And I've still got this thing on. This this hasn't, again, it hasn't, nothing's given me any problems yet. It's been completely fine. So I'll just make this inactive since I'm not using it. Uh, I'll save those resources. Um, but at, at any rate, I haven't needed to, you know, I haven't needed to turn it on or off. Here's all my vocals happening. There's, there's also, um, they're going into some of them. If we pull open here, we'll just take those down and you can see that some of these are uh going into a distortion channel right so you can see that distortion channel is happening here and that means that this distortion channel is being run by fab filter saturn so um with some let's see do i have what do i have on here high quality uh is set to good, good setting currently. And uh, yeah, and then some effects, not my whole, you know, list or whole, you know, sort of buckets of effects running currently, just a tape slap and a plate. Um, but that's, that's it. And then going into my output buses, which I group into drums, music, vocals, and effects, uh, just those four buckets. And then all going into my master fader, which is going into a couple of glue stages, uh, an SSL uh, compression, and a um, Fairchild compression. Both of them not really compressing Nothing more than, you know, two, to really. Because I want them to total at about four, both of them together. No uh, or no more than four, if that makes sense. So just a really subtle pumping, you know, if you turn these on or off, you'll kind of, you know, you'll you'll hear a really subtle pumping of the song, which it starts to sound like a, this to me is what makes it sound like a record. Um, but anyway, that's getting into mixing. This is the other use that I would have for Pro Tools, right, is I would want to come in here and do all this mixing. So that's adding all these plugins to individual uh instruments or individual acoustic uh recordings like the vocal recordings here um and plugins into the groups like i didn't really talk about these yet so like the drums or music or vocal groups these are all going into a um plugin alliance uh uh lindel 80 series uh bus which is just it's just a little bit of gain and a, and a little bit of tucking on each channel and then each of them kind of set up with uh, a different um you know different channels for each one so that it kind of has that sort of console console flavor glue effect i think it has a little bit of a difference i set it up so that it makes a little bit of a difference um you know you you guys tell me what you guys do with these particular things but anyway this is what i would use pro tools for right and it's uh it's running really really well for me in my use case so um, you know i i don't want to say that you should definitely go out and get this uh yourself um one thing i am noticing from time to time is this little sort of visual glitch which can come up where these little dots appear on my timeline but i'm sure that is maybe something that's on avid's radar um and when i scroll up or down typically a couple times uh sometimes um then that tends to go away. Sometimes it doesn't go away. But um, it's one of those things that really doesn't have any effect. You know, and that's that's really the only thing that I've noticed. Um, other than that, it's, it's working really, really well. You know, I can't really complain. Um, it's, for me, it's, for what I need to use Pro Tools for, it's working really, 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 really well for me. Uh, using Pro Tools um, just natively with these plugins that I that I tend to use. Um, I do have quite a lot of plugins at this point, but I don't use all of them all the time. So some of them are going to be working well on the M1 chips. Some of them are not. Um, you know, I'm not trying to encourage anyone to go out and go buy this machine or any M1 Mac machines or any machine for that matter. I'm just telling you what my experience is right now for those that are interested uh, and that way you guys can, um, sort of see what, you know, tools you use. Uh, if there are some of these tools that I use, fantastic. Um, but ultimately everyone should make, should make this personal decision for themselves. 
and understand what tools they need to use, especially if they have a career built around using these tools, um, then, you know, you have to validate whether or not the tools that you need to use that you must have, you know, you have to make sure that those tools work on the M1 chips if you're going to consider buying this kind of machine. But with that being said, these tools that I use on a regular basis, the SSL channel strips, the 1176 compressors, the Fab Filter compressors, uh, the Echo Boy, this plate reverb, uh, this Lindel bus, uh, the SSL compressor, Fairchild or Pugchild compressor, and the L2 at the end. And it's all working really well, you know? So, um, so yeah, I think that about wraps it up for this particular video. Have a fantastic rest of the day. Until next time. I try.